What sort of obstacles exist here? What have you found in, um, in the government's work? What lessons have you learnt on how um, development actors can bring some of these accountability initiatives to, to scale? Well, I think one very important obstacle is uh, the culture of development organisations and development agencies, uh, development policy makers themselves because we often get too obsessed with um, results and the shortest way of delivering them. If you want democratic accountability, uh, you may at times need to take some extra turns. It might not be the fastest route from A to B, but it's the most sustainable route from A to B. And I think instead of focusing technically on what needs to be done, we also need to focus on how things are done and ensure that they're done in a way that brings citizens on board and that can strengthen democratic accountability in the process of development aid. And as a donor, does that mean perhaps new opportunities for development implementers along those lines? Well, that's uh, something we need to strive for, definitely. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask what the role of non-traditional development actors was vis-à-vis um, -vis the, the Norwegian government, whether this is foundations, the private sector, other actors. Um, specifically talking about accountability drives. What role do these actors have to play? Well, first of all, you've seen a massive shift in the last 20, 25 years. Uh, some 20 years ago, development aid took up 60-70% of capital flows to poor countries. Today, I think it's less than 20%. And the difference is remittances, it's trade, it's investments. And that means private sector activity has become much more important. And then accountability structures and accountability dynamics are very different in the private sector than uh, for governments. But we're seeing there too a significant shift. We've seen how corporate social responsibility 10 years ago was a do-gooder sideshow in most businesses. Today, Compliance, human rights compliance, is a boardroom matter. It's the stuff that CEOs can be um, can can be um, thrown out of their seat. So we see a, a major shift. Um, serious companies are taking this seriously. There's a long way to go, but we see a, an immense evolution here. There was a lot of talk at um, the fin third financing for uh, development conference in Addis Ababa in July about this shift towards uh, domestic resource mobilisation. I wondered how your role as a, as a donor country would change vis-à-vis uh, -vis, um, accountability in that respect. Well, one of the things we have given uh, priority to is private sector development. We have to realise that while development aid is important, uh, it will never create economic development. Um, Economic development has to be homegrown, like democracies have to be homegrown, and private sector development is essential there. But you need to make that coupling then with accountability also for private sector development. And do you think that there are sufficient incentives in place to uh, render a move towards accountability uh, relatively organic? I think so, and I, I think it's, it's because um, citizens uh, when you talk about citizens vis-à-vis uh, -vis a government, are also consumers when you talk uh, um, about the private sector. And uh, market forces work. You can like them or not, but they work. <laughs> and uh, that means um, that we have a, a shift towards more accountability also for private sector-led growth.